Hello everyone, I'm Mayank from the Android Studio team. Let's look at how we can use highly actionable profiling techniques in Android Studio. Today's users expect their apps to start fast, be responsive, and be battery efficient. In this video, we'll show you how to improve your app's performance with three key techniques. Correctly measuring and improving app startup time, optimizing rendering performance, and reducing power consumption. By following these techniques, you can dramatically improve the user experience for your end users. When it comes to measuring app startup time, there are multiple options. You can get an initial understanding of performance via field data from Google Play Vitals or Firebase Performance Monitoring. However, to get a complete understanding of the performance, you need to perform local testing with the Macro Benchmark Library, which provides very useful and detailed results. In this presentation, we are relying on your favorite sample app, Now in Android. Now in Android is a fully functional Android app that aims to educate developers on best practices for Android development. As your app gets popular and more users are using it, making sure that it is loading fast and performing well is an important task. Faster apps lead to higher user satisfaction, leading into more user engagement and eventually to better business metrics. Let's take a detailed look at the app's startup time and see whether we can improve it. Monitoring and improving startup metrics locally is really important. This allows us to A-B test locally and check for performance regression before a new version of the app is released to the users. We are using the Macro Benchmark Library to inspect the app startup timing for the release variant of now an Android app. At first glance, the results look OK. 389 milliseconds for time to initial display. App startup times that are faster than one second are likely going to make users happy. Anything less than half a second for app startup is extremely good. However, the problem is that you're not seeing the complete picture yet. And to tell you more about it, I would like to invite my esteemed colleague, Yasser. Thanks, Mayank. Let me fill in the blanks. The Android framework can only measure app startup reliably until the first frame is drawn, but the app is not ready to use at that point. However, what users really want and care about is when your app's UI is fully drawn and ready for them to interact with. These are two clearly different stages in your app startup lifecycle. That is why we need to measure TTFD, or time to full display. It is the time it takes for your app to become interactive for the user. To do this, your app's code needs to call either the report fully drawn or fully drawn reporter API when your app startup sequence has completed and is ready for user interaction. With TTFD implemented, you run the macro benchmark once again to see the true picture of your app startup time. In this case, there's a lot of image loading and rendering happening behind the scenes. With that said, your app startup with TTFD takes a total of 941 milliseconds to start and be ready for interaction by the user, which is almost 142% more than just measuring the time to the first UI frame. That's quite the difference. And now you can add a startup and baseline profile to boost app startup performance at compile and runtime respectively. Using both a startup and baseline profile, you can expect an improved code execution speed by about 30% from the first launch. Much of this 30% boost can be attributed to the baseline profile itself. Baseline profiles avoid instantiation, interpretation, and just-in-time, or JIT, compilation steps for the included code paths. We will take a closer look at how to analyze this reduction in JIT later on. Adding a startup and baseline profile is now really easy through the baseline profile generator tool. Literally just four clicks, and you are ready to test using the profiles. With the startup and baseline profiles applied, the app startup time to TTFT immediately improves by 31%. Have you ever wondered why a baseline profile improves your app startup? As you can see from the screenshot of the Android Studio profiler, without the baseline profile, there is about one second spent JIT compiling. And after adding the baseline profile, there is about a 70% reduction of JIT compilation time in your app startup sequence. Combined with more efficient class initialization, the startup sequence sees an immediate boost in performance. When several Google apps enabled an early version of baseline profile, they saw significant benefits 
even in the apps with network activity during the startup sequence. For example, Gboard and the dialer now launch about 30% faster. And we keep on adding baseline profiles to more Google Apps. To conclude, always measure DTFD, time to fully display, when measuring your app startup, because you want to realistically model the same startup time that your end user experiences. And the combination of startup and baseline profiles reduces JIT compilation and improves class initialization from the startup sequence. And this dramatically speeds up your app startup. Now let's talk about rendering performance. By now, you've already used baseline and startup profiles to improve startup speed. Do you know that baseline profiles can also improve performance of an entire user journey? Wouldn't it be great if you could improve the loading speed for one of the most used features in your app? Home screen scrolling, something that everybody does all the time. Let's see a real life performance optimization example with the now an Android app. And once again, you go back to your trusted macro benchmark test to instrument the home screen scrolling feature with UI Automator. This UI Automator test will be used by the macro benchmark to give us important rendering metrics to work with. The benchmark shows us why our users have been complaining. Specifically, the metrics for overrun show that the worst 1% of frames have been rendered slower than the synchronization deadline allows. For context, an overrun is the amount of time a given frame misses its deadline. Looking at our results, this means our users are likely seeing rendering problems within our app. Let's investigate this further with the Android Studio Profiler. We open up the macro benchmark traces into the profiler and look into how much J activity was detected in the home screen scrolling benchmark. The important metric to know here is the JIT thread pool children time, which indicates our app's total time spent JIT compiling. Did you know that the Android Studio Profiler also has the ability to detect and show frames which have rendering issues using jank markers? These are the frames which took more time than their rendering deadline allowed. The more frames detected with jank markers, the more stutter the end user will experience. Reviewing this data, looks like we have 1.7 seconds of JIT and eight jank markers showing up in the home screen scrolling benchmark. The higher these metrics are in a system trace, the more jitter in your end user's experience. And once again, we are going to reach for baseline profiles to help us. Let's generate a baseline profile for home screen scrolling and add it to our app. And you see the change in performance immediately, especially in the 99th percentile values for the overrun metric, which have improved by over 100%. Also, as you can see, we have no overrun now, as the value is negative. So even our worst 1% of frames are meeting their deadlines. And by reviewing the same JIT activity and number of jank markers through the Android Studio Profiler, we see a significant reduction, 68% reduction in JIT, and the jank markers are now all gone. You can also measure the same JIT activity that you saw manually through profilers in a macro benchmark. Measure it by simply adding a frame timing metric to the benchmark. This enables automated and reproducible performance monitoring for any feature that requires complex rendering. And as you can see, the results speak for themselves. The JIT activity as measured by the macro benchmark before and after adding the baseline profile for the home screen scrolling was reduced by a staggering 82%. The average improvement you can expect to see is about 30%. Now just imagine how useful could this be if you could run this as a regression analysis in your CI system. As you create nightly builds, any build which regress on these metrics is a potential release blocker. You might not know what is the exact value of good performance number, but you for sure can detect a regression. That's an easy win. To conclude, if you focus on the user and provide them a fun and a fast user experience, they would love your app, and all subsequent business metrics would follow. Now let's talk about another important topic, how to measure and understand and potentially improve your app's power consumption footprint. Apps which optimize for power consumption have an improved battery and thermal performance. This often leads to an improved end user experience.
After all, no one wants to use an app which drains their phone battery and makes the phone hot. The preferred tool to measure power consumption on Pixel 6 Plus devices is the new Power Profiler in Android Studio. Available inside the system trace data, you can now visually see the power consumption across all important power rails. This data inside the system trace helps you to visually correlate power consumption of the device with the actions happening in the app. For the devices which do not support power rails, the battery gauges and coulomb counters can also be measured. Be sure to use any Pixel 6 Plus device to get the data from the power rails. With so many power rails available, you might ask which ones are important for you? Anytime your app uses sensors, network, creates activity on CPU, GPU, memory, disk, or interacts with camera, that's a key moment for you to understand power consumption in the relevant power rail. We built a very simple example to understand the power consumption footprint. Assume you have a video rental app which shows video trailers of the home screen to promote new content. And you want to understand how this video trailer impacts power consumption on the device. A question you have to ask, just when a user opens your app, do you really need a 4K video trailer on the home screen? It is a big video file pulled from the network on every app startup. How will the power consumption footprint of your app change if this video wasn't in 4K? Well, let's run an A-B test to see. In scenario A, we will use a 4K video and measure its power consumption. And in scenario B, we will use a relatively lower quality video and measure its power consumption. For scenario A, capture a system trace beginning on app startup and note down its power measurements in the initial 30 seconds. Now repeat the same process with the low quality video in scenario B and note down the power consumption. Zooming in, one can clearly see a large difference in power consumption across variants A and B. Scenario B uses 45% less power by simply replacing a 4K video with a lower quality video, all without much loss of visual appeal in the app's home screen. And guess what? This measurement is also available in Macro Benchmark for all the amazing automations you could build. To conclude, use the new Power Profiler in Android Studio with the Macro Benchmark to measure and understand your app's power footprint. And A-B testing is a great technique to validate an experiment with improving power consumption. Now, before we wrap this up, let's address the canary in the room. We are constantly working with our community and partners to improve tooling available in Android Studio. Something we've heard time and again is how all app developers love using Leak Canary to find memory leaks in their apps. Leak Canary's knowledge of the internals of Android framework gives it a unique ability to identify memory leaks. Fixing memory leaks allows developers to dramatically reduce jank, ANRs, and out-of-memory crashes in their app. What if we could bring Leak Canary directly inside Android Studio and power it up with the same amazing tooling that we have inside the IDE? In one of the upcoming Android Studio Canary builds, we will be previewing the integration with Leak Canary. We have built a brand new task in Android Studio Profiler to specifically detect memory leaks with Leak Canary. Once you start the Leak Canary task and memory leaks are found, it will be automatically visible to you inside Android Studio for inspection. You can view the leak analysis directly in the IDE and even quickly navigate to the source code from where the leak might be originating from. You no longer have to copy paste or email the leak to yourself just to view it. This opens up so many possibilities and we can't wait to get this integration in your hands. As always, be sure to check out Android Studio's latest Canary builds for exciting new features. On behalf of Yasser, myself, and the entire Android team, a big thank you for your time. Cheers.